Hello, this is Kay Olin from The Essence of Transformation. This is episode four, and I'm going to be discussing astrology and discussing sun signs and some of the dynamics that go on with particular sun signs. I think you're going to enjoy it. It should be a lot of fun. There will be four or five more episodes of it because I'm only going to be discussing three sun signs at a time, and there are 12 in a horoscope. But first, it's important for me to thank you very much for having tuned into the other episodes and and for your enjoyment of them. It's been so much fun to hear from people and to continually work on this particular series. I also wanted to add my phone number because I've been asked to put up my business number, which is 413-282-8538. That's 413-282-8538. Two eight two eight five three eight. So if you have any questions or you're interested in a reading, feel free to give me a call and we'll schedule a time together. I get paid through PayPal, a check, and also Western Union. So those are the three ways in which I get paid for the consults and readings. And if you're interested in my being part of a media event, just let me know. We'll figure out our schedule and see if it's if I'm free to do that. And I appreciate your thinking on me very much. So what I'm going to do is get into astrology right now. It's a very interesting, metaphysics is extremely interesting, and I started to explore it when I was, well, many, many, quite a few decades ago. It was interesting. I received a horoscope from my sister, a natal reading, And it was really, really so accurate. It was surprising. And from, as I mentioned in my first episode, Jay Robinson. And it really, really captured my attention. I loved that it had to do with relationship dynamics. And I was especially pleased to continually be learning about it throughout my life. And astrology is easy to test because there are so many relationships around you all the time. And the more you learn about how accurate it is, it really is stunning. It's really surprising. And it's it's also a lot of fun. I recommend learning astrology because, again, enhance your self-awareness. It increases your knowledge of others and yourself. It increases your ability to discern, validates your past and present intuitive experiences. It can also help you with your dreams in terms of the symbolism in some of your dreams. And it helps you to accept growth and growth cycles that may be difficult because with a horoscope reading, you can find out when a certain cycle that's particularly difficult will come to an end. So it's very important to learn as much as you can to help you to develop some of the skills you may be needing, especially if you happen to be in crises right now, as many people are and that it can help you learn how to navigate your way through it so that you're actually, you're coping. However, it also tells you about periods of tremendous joy. It does that, about births. (laughs) And it's a lot of fun. And I know several people right now who are about to have children, and it's going to be a whole new experience for them. And I'm excited for them and happy for them. I think that being a parent in these times has taken enormous courage. And what you want to do is prepare your children for their future, not your past. And I think that astrology helps people understand themselves well enough so that you're not, you don't tend to project onto people as much as you might otherwise. You also can find out what your particular skills actually are yourself, if you're having some indecision about a career decision, a profession, or a move from one place to another, astrology can help you determine when's the best cycle for you to make those changes. So as you can see, I'm a fan of, I'm a fan of astrology. <laughs> I definitely am a fan of astrology. You know that there are 12 signs in the zodiac, 12. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, 
Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. Some of these are Earth signs, such as Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. Then we have, we have Aries, which is a fire sign. So is Leo. So is Sagittarius. We have Gemini, which is air. Libra and Aquarius, all air. And then we have the water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Why is that important? It's important because fire signs come in with a very definite passion, a very passionate approach to life. They are idealists, and they like to see manifestations for those particular ideals. With earth signs, they come in very, very grounded, but often they can come in with homes which are very challenging, where the parents may not be as grounded, so that can be a source of frustration for them. However, Torians are very, very patient, so they'll wait a long time with the outcome that they're hoping for in school, at work, in their family life. They can wait a long time. They can be incredibly patient. With Geminis, Geminis can be very much conversational, but their own instincts tend to make them be more reticent to make firm decisions. They're more reluctant to. They're more ambivalent to. It's not a negative. It's just how they work. So the people in their lives need to be patient with them when they're going through periods of indecisiveness. Then there's cancer, and cancer is water. Water is very intuitive. Most everybody with cancer, who is a cancer, is intuitive. This can be more comfortable for women because women are expected to be able to regenerate, to intuit, to anticipate things before they take place. For men, it can be harder to experience so much emotion because they may not be able to express it in their environment. It may be resented. It may not be considered masculine. With Leo, Leos are extremely idealistic. Again, a fire sign like Aries. And when they are into their passion regarding what they believe in, there is simply no talking to them. (laughs) There just isn't. They're in their own zone. Same with Aries. And they're also fiercely independent. So those are interesting dynamics. If you know one and you're close to any Leo or to an Aries, and you're going to know that they really are very self-focused and self-directed. Once they have established where that direction is going, then they are great servants for humanity and great, and even within their own families because they tend to navigate toward acceptance and approval and trying to draw out the best in things in situations until they can't anymore. And when they can't, they give up and they move on. When they move on, they don't look back. They don't look back. And usually, not only Aries, but Leos will give people warnings. I go, I'm not, I'm not sure about this. I don't think so. If you get the third warning, then you know that whatever's going on is over. Then we have Virgo, which is also, Virgo is an earth sign, like Taurus. So they're more interested in what makes sense. They don't like it when things don't really make sense. Now, that doesn't mean that they don't have imagination at all. They can be extremely imaginative. However, they go through a lot of self-criticism first. So if you're having a relationship to a Virgo, you really can't criticize them. You can't because they'll be, oh, I've been there, done that. So it's off the table. If it's off the table, there's no relationship because then they're not communicating. And they'll go back to the fantasy world, the one that they created by themselves, that they will not let you interfere in. Do people get over this stuff? Of course they do. Of course. But these are some of the pitfalls and some of the weirdness of beginnings of new relationships. And it doesn't matter if it's a work relationship 
or um, uh, an issue with a teacher, a family member. When people are around Virgos, they tend to withhold a lot because there's almost no point in saying anything to them because in many ways they're just not going to get it. They're not going to get it. And they are great servers. They like to serve humanity. They don't want to relate to it. They just want to serve. But of course, a serving requires relationship. With Libra, Libras are born into an environment where their parents <clears throat> were really at war with one another. They may have had different ways of showing it or expressing it. So I'm not saying what that term means. It just means that they were in conflict with one another. They tried to make things be nice. They couldn't be nice at the time of the conception of the Libra and the first four years of the Libran's life. So the Libra comes into the situation with a, an innate sense of things aren't really what they seem because the parents of the Libra demand of themselves that everything be nice. They don't want anything really hostile. They don't. So the Libra learns that there can be a lot of anger, but it really can't be expressed. And a lot of people come to Libras because they're expecting to be encouraged to be in harmony with one another, but they'll also attract many people who are really in deep conflict about serious issues because they need that Libra balance and that Libra kind of, it'll be okay, you'll see, it'll be all right, which is really, really nice. But for the Libra, independent of other people, it's harder for them to tap into anger and really express it. Then we have the Scorpio. Now the Scorpio is born into an environment where the child is, is wanted. The issues that they bring into the family's life may not be wanted, however. I'm gonna take a very shallow sample. Scorpio comes in, they're adorable, they're loving, they're charismatic, they're loved. Four or five or six or even 10 years into their development, they start to be exposing problems to the family dynamics that the family is unfamiliar with and that the family may not want to deal with or they may not be able to deal with it. And that can be anything, an array of problems for human beings. We come into the world with many, many different, very individual situations that require a lot of care and attention. However, the Scorpio does not like not being dealt with honestly. Another thing is they're being born into an environment where there was a family member who was grieved over when they were conceived. So there was some mourning for the first two years of their life. So they come into the world with a very deep sense of this undercurrent that there's life and there's death and there's life and there's death and there's life and there's death. And, and those issues are difficult for the family dynamics to transcend. So they remain very sensitized to the undercurrent of events in human dynamics. They can be distrusting. They can need a lot of control in environments, in relationships, because they don't want to go to that place of insecurity. They just don't want to. With Sagittarians, Sagittarians are another fire sign. They have come into the world where the father is not emotionally present. It can be a variety of reasons why not, including also mental illness, but or physical, physically out of the home. <coughs> Excuse me. And so the Sagittarian child is kind of very involved in their own imaginations. And they start to they start to build happy endings for themselves. And they want to remain young. They tend to have a real fear of getting older. And the mother, for some reason or other, is also not completely present emotionally in the child's upbringing. And I don't mean that no one's physically present. I'm talking about spiritually and emotionally present. 
there can be many reasons for that as well. So none of this is a criticism of anybody. This is simply the analysis of the dynamic involved for this child to develop through within any family system. However, one of the things with Sagittarius is they are having to find a way in which to express their their hopes and dreams. They really have to. Or they will project them onto others a lot. When that gets projected onto others, they're going to be disappointed because no one's going to carry that for them. They're going to have to learn how to do that for themselves. Once they do, they'll be fine. Then we have Capricorn. Capricorn is raised in a very strict environment. There are very traditional expectations put on them about behavior. And this is anywhere that Capricorn is in the horoscope, which I will get into in another episode. <coughs> but if you are a sun sign Capricorn, then you are going to be told what to do and how to do it. You're going to be told when to do it and where to do it. And the expectations on you are incredibly clear. So if you want to go in one direction, but your parents don't approve, and they're like, no, you're not going to go in that direction. You're not going to go in that direction. It's not going to happen. So you begin to become very compliant and can be very traditional for a very long time. One of the issues with Capricorn is you can't express anger. So unfortunately, adults who are Capricorns have a difficulty really expressing anger when they need to. <clears throat> they do. They prefer to have control over their environment than to express anger. So that's one of the working areas for any relationship to anybody with a Capricorn. Then we have Aquarius, which is water. I'm sorry, air. It's air. So Aquarius is an air sign. And their family, when their parents have them, their parents aren't relating to one another at all at the time. So Aquarians come in with this deep curiosity about relationship because even as babies, even as infants, you kind of really know your parents already. You really do. And the infant is absorbing that the parents really don't relate to one another. <laughs> and they absorb this for about three or four years. Now, a lot of us come into family life because we're completing uh, almost a puzzle about one holistic family dynamic. Aquarians bring to the family a sense of, of expansion, a sense of <clears throat> unity, a desire to believe that we are all really the same, a desire to think that things will work out okay whether you're relating or not, whether you're emotionally present or not, it will be okay. It's a head sign. They're in their heads. Part of the lessons in life is to get in your body, to really get in your body. And that's not a very easy thing for Aquarians to do. They're much more comfortable in their heads. But they will draw people into their lives who are going to be demanding of them that, that they be treated just as they would treat the next door neighbor. Because Aquarians have a tendency to treat the person down the block better than they do the person in their own homes. All of us are needing to channel the way in which we care to serve humanity, but we can't do it at the expense of serving our families. That doesn't work. So, then we have Pisces, and Pisces is water. Pisces is so intuitive, and again, usually they are born in an environment that is where there's grief. So they are tapped into the grieving side of life. They are this beautiful new birth, this new human being, and they have a very strong intuition. Pisces can have a tendency to give in to different forms of excess because they want to be able to escape certain facets of reality and they're not so sure how to do that. 
And they have to find out. They need to find out along the way how they can do that. And they don't really need or have to go into depressions, but they feel things very, very, very deeply. So it's always good for Cap for uh, Pisces to be willing to look into different forms of therapy that will help them and certainly to develop their own psychic gift because they already are really psychic. And if their environments are such that they are not allowed to be psychic or intuitive or to express it, that will cause them a great deal of unhappiness. They really need it. So that's also a very important part of the dynamics of, <clears throat> excuse me, sun signs, particularly. So what I'm going to do in the next show is to discuss this even more because I want to, I'm going to be hearing from people about what sun sign they are, what the sun sign is of the person they're involved with, <clears throat> what the sun sign is of their son or their daughter. Um, one of the things with Aries is their fire sign, and they're born into a situation where their parents really loved one another and were very happy together with that. With that, and um, and after several years, the the real happiness kind of um, dissolved. Well, in maturation processes, that can happen. It regenerates again in another form that's more compatible with the age that you're in, the times you're living in the family dynamics and what they require from you. So it doesn't mean that you don't get through it or beyond it, but for the Aryan child, they've experienced romantic disappointment by the time they're four because their parents had. And, par and children love their parents first, so when they see their parents being sad or estranged from one another, they can internalize it. And they don't like that stuff. They just don't like it. <laughs> And then they're going to keep, so they're going to have an element of concern of intimate relationships because they're not that convinced that they want to go there. And people involved with them will notice that, that there has to be a lot of staying power in a good union. There has to be. And if you're not interested in, in that, then unions will dissolve. <clears throat> And unfortunately, there's unions always require change. They simply require change. <clears throat> so once again, I'm just very happy to say hello. <clears throat> this is a shorter program than what I'm used to, but I don't think that matters. I think that's fine. I will be getting back on about these horoscopes. I want to discuss them more at length, each one. I want to remind everybody that in this time when women's rights are being taken away from them, that the National Organization for Women is a great organization to join so that you can meet other women, connect, connect to your own rights, connect to your own right to have control over your body, to affirm other women's rights to that. Their number is 202-628-8669. So I hope that you will reach out, call them, consider joining, uh, because I think that women really need each other. You need each other now. And once again, my number is 413-282-8538, 413-282-8538. So do you feel free to call to arrange a reading over the phone or a consult? And <clears throat> I will look forward to hearing from you. And I will, doing more, I will be doing more shows on this, on this subject soon. Thank you very much.